Hello and welcome to John Can Fix Anything. Today I'm going to show you a comprehensive video on doing preventive maintenance on a 2.5i Subaru engine. This particular engine we're going to work on today is out of a 2006 model Subaru Legacy. Uh, which is my son's. We're basically going to go through this car from front to back and uh, take care of all the preventive maintenance steps. So what you're basically going to see here is you're going to see a uh, plug change, you're going to see a uh, fuel injector change, uh, transmission service, uh, oil change, uh, PCV valve. There's going to be a lot of different things here uh, where everything's located on the engine. A lot of those little finer things that most people don't do on their vehicle, you're probably going to see it on this video. So so if you want to know how to do a really good preventive maintenance on your 2.5i engine, then stay tuned. All right, this is the boring part where I always talk a little bit about safety, but it's important for these types of projects. You're about to go into the engine and you're going to be putting in new fuel injectors. You're also going to be doing plugs and different things as well. Fuel injectors, uh, in this particular model, it's not under pressure, but a lot of them are. But no matter what, you're going to be dealing with gasoline, okay? So I highly recommend that you wear a pair of safety glasses. No matter what the project is, safety glasses are a good thing. You never know when a wrench will slip off or something will happen and something will shoot up towards your eye and these pair of safety glasses will save that from happening. So make sure you get yourself a good pair of safety glasses. I like to use rubber gloves on this project because of the gasoline. I don't want to get it on my skin so that's another good option as well. As far as tools go for this project, it's a pretty standard project. Uh, the mechanics tools will work. I do recommend that you get a a, um, socket for the actual plug, uh, an actual plug socket and an extension for that. Um, the standard sockets don't hold those plugs in um, and the, the, the plug socket has a piece of rubber inside it that holds the plug inside it and it allows you to put it down into the cylinder and tighten it up a lot easier. So I do recommend that, but there's no specialty tools. So you don't need to go to your local auto parts store or anything like that. I think pretty much the standard tools, how your toolbox will do, but I do recommend an extension and a uh, spark plug socket. So with that, we'll go ahead and get the car set up and we'll be back. Alright, so I've got the car pulled in and I've got everything ready to go. So where we're going is we're going underneath this cover right here and this cover right here. That's where the injectors are and then underneath those are where the spark plugs are. So that's where we're heading first. Um, I probably will have to take the battery out on this one. I'm not quite sure yet. I am going to remove the negative ground no matter what because we're working on the ignition system. But I'm definitely going to go through, take this stuff off, the air box off, and this uh, hose going to the air cleaner. I'm going to get all that stuff off so I can get down there where I need to go. Also, on the back is where the PCV valve is on this one. So I've got to clear that stuff off anyway so I can get to that. And uh, then we'll go from there. So we'll be right back in a few minutes. There's a bolt on the bottom of the air box that's got to be removed down on the bottom by the frame. Um, and it needs a long extension for that, so make sure you get that. And then once you get that out, I believe the box will pull out, but I haven't had this out in so long. There may be one more. Yeah, there looks like there's one more small, like an 8 millimeter up here on the top. So I'll have to get both of those out or that air box will slide out of there. It's a 10 millimeter and it's right underneath this lip right here uh, and it's got to be removed as well. It's just a nut. Once I pull the plug wires out, here are the plug wires right here. Okay, once I pulled those out, then I was able to go ahead and get the cover off. When I did, um, to take those uh, plug wires out, there's this little connector right here. You'll need to take a little flat tip screwdriver, 
I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. Take a little flat tip screwdriver, put it right in there. And you can pull that right out. Okay, just like that. Then you can go ahead and take those wires off. But you can see that there, that's where that bottom bolt was. It's, it was hid by a hose that you might as well go ahead and take that hose out. So now that I got that cover off, now I've got access to my um, injectors. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start taking this loose. There's a couple connectors under here. I'm going to disconnect those uh, and get to those injectors and take this uh, injector rail off. So I'm going to go ahead and get on that and I will be back. Okay, a couple things I need to show you here. Um, what holds this fuel rail in is a couple of two 12 millimeter bolts. You can see I've already loosened that up, right? And then the fuel rail actually just comes off and then now I gotta take it loose in here. And I wanna study that real quick before I do that, but it looks like it just takes a, a snap off right there. But this is the fuel rail, okay? And you have to get this these um, lines, these electrical lines off first. And the way to do that is, is they have uh, connectors. Um, this one has a top connector, and this one has a top connector, and you have to actually take a pair of pliers and pull those. And then the, these connections actually pull out this way, okay? These don't go that way. And then this is bolted down with a 12 millimeter bolt, okay, right in there. So you need to take that 12 millimeter bolt out right there, and go ahead and disconnect the uh, fuel injectors, and they're just uh, little snaps down on the bottom. Right on the bottom, you just push in and pull them out, okay? And then that way you can go ahead and take this whole thing, move it out of the way, okay? That, that gives you full access um, to the important thing right here, okay? Now I'm probably just gonna leave this fuel rail on. I don't think I even need to take that apart because I can get to everything I need to right here to go ahead and uh, pull these injectors out. See, there they go right there. So I don't need to pull that off. And see, you're gonna get a little bit of uh, gas. You saw that gas run out of there, so be careful, all right, when you do that. Make sure you've got a little bit of a, um, you know, rag or something like that, but they'll stop in a few seconds, all right? And then go ahead and pull both of these out. I, I'm gonna clean up everything around there and make sure everything's cleaned out. Clean all of the, um, I'm gonna clean all the dirt and everything around the cylinders and make sure that's all ready. But um, there's your old ones right there. Now you've got a couple of, of donuts on the top there, but neither one of them came out, so that means they're inside. So you wanna make sure you, you uh, pry those out. And then you got two, you got new on the bottom. Make sure that your new injectors have the new ones on them. I'll show you mine right here. So you'll be able to see it. See, there's my new injector and there's that donut on the top right there. And that donut is still inside there. So we gotta make sure that comes out, okay? Then the bottom has a new one right here and has a little bitty one right there on the bottom. So that's the injector right there, that's the new one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get everything cleaned up and then I'm gonna go ahead and slide those new injectors in, bolt them back down. All right, so I've got everything uh, cleaned up around the uh, plugs and the housing, the fuel rail. I went in and just made sure that the uh, inside of the fuel injector housing was all cleaned up. I've got all that done and ready to go. And before I do that, you're right now, you're right where the spark plugs are and this is your best shot to go ahead and get the spark plugs done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. You probably need an extension and I always like to use a spark plug uh, socket with the rubber in it. That way it goes in, grabs it and you can pull it out easy and put it back in easy, okay? But as you can see, I can just slide that right in there and I'm on it right like that. So you may need a little bit of shorter extension over on this one. Um, I've just happened to have that long one in my hand, but you may need probably a six inch or whatever for that other side. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull these plugs out and put the new plugs in while I'm at it. So I can have that done. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put the new injectors on. Okay, one thing I wanna caution you on right away is when you start replacing these uh, parts, first thing you wanna do is compare your old parts to your new parts, your, your new plugs to your old plugs. You wanna make sure, absolutely sure, that you've got the right uh, replacement part, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you check those, because if you get the wrong ones, you're gonna go through a whole bunch of work, and a lot of times, they'll screw in, and they'll look like they're working, and then when you go to start the vehicle, they don't run. So make sure you check them closely, make sure the parts are the good replacement parts. 
All right, for this back plug, you're going to need a three inch and a swivel because of the way this, um, these rails and everything are set up. You're gonna have to go in at, at an angle to get into that back one. And you can't quite do it if you use a straight, um, if you use just a straight extension, this is too short, the other one is too long. So you need an extension and you need a swivel. Okay, that will go right in there and you'll have no problems with it. All right, when you put your new plugs back in, put a little anti-seize on the plug, that way the next time you do the job, you won't have to do it, even though these don't have to be done very often. Okay, then go ahead and put it into your socket. Make sure you've got the ring around it, a little metal retaining ring. Make sure your gap's correct. Okay, make sure you check that. Go ahead and slide it back in. And I like to do this by hand. Um, I don't put a wrench on it until I'm confident uh, that I got it started right. Okay. So now here I know I've got it started right. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. And I'll see if I can find the specifications for the torque on these. And I will uh, put it in the remarks column. But definitely check your torque. Use a torque wrench. Uh, you don't want to strip these off. These are, you know, these are just uh, uh, four cylinders. And the, the walls on these are pretty thin. So you can strip these out. So I'd, I'd want to be real careful with that. So let me go ahead and put these plugs back in. And uh, I'll be back. I use a Bosch Platinum a replacement plug, but don't get hung up on any particular one. Um, as long as you use a Platinum, I do think that uh, you should use a Platinum on them. I don't think you should use a regular plug, but that's just a personal preference. So, I mean, whatever you want to use, that's fine. Uh, if you look at what the uh, repair manual say, they're going to say put a Platinum back in there. Um, um, what is it? NGK makes a good one. Bosch makes a good one. You know, you can also go with a Champion or whatever. But um, I recommend definitely that you put a Platinum in or a Dual Platinum. Okay, I'm ready to put the first injector back in. And again, um, I've cleaned everything up. Um, I've wiped these out. I'm going to wipe this one out one more time because it looks like I may have gotten something back in there again. If you've got to get into one of these uh, cylinders, right, where these uh, injectors go in, get a vacuum, okay? Don't try to go in there and, and rub that out because if you get any particles into the uh, cylinder, you're gonna, you could possibly damage your injury cylinder. So just get you a little vacuum or any type of vacuum cleaner and just vacuum it out. Uh, don't, don't try to wipe it out with a rag. Okay, now I'm ready to go again. I uh, got my O-ring, got everything back together again. I've got everything cleaned up, and they look nice and clean. So what I do, too, with this O-ring is I just take a little bit of lube grease, right? I mean, just enough to know that you got it on your hand. And I just wipe that with that grease just so that it'll slide in nice and smooth. Okay, so now I got that. I'm going to go ahead and slide that in. Make sure that the tops get seated all the way in. You should be able to just barely see the, t the top of the black seal, okay? It should be right on that edge. And your bolts, will your uh, top of the fuel rail will line right up flush, okay? Where your bolts go in. So you know you got it, okay? Then take your two bolts. And these two bolts are a little bit longer than the other bolts that came out from around the shroud and the covers, okay? They're just a hair bit longer. Don't put the wrong bolt in, okay? And I would go ahead and put some uh, anisees on these as well. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. I wouldn't put the permanent one on, but at least put the red on. So let me do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, I got the fuel rail back on. I uh, got it tightened up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and connect everything back up and connect my uh, uh, my new spark plugs up and I'm going to crank it because I don't want to put this all back together again and then it not run. So I'm going to do that real quick and, and make sure everything works. Then I'll put the cover and stuff back on. So we'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and cranked everything up. I didn't have any leaks around my uh, injectors. Everything started right. I didn't, uh, nothing was missing. So I'm good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, take these lines back off and go ahead and put the shield back on uh, and just button this side back up, clean everything up while I'm in there and then I'll head over to the other side. So we'll be back shortly. 
right, I got this whole side all put back together again. And before I leave it, I want to let you know where the PCV valve is. The PCV valve is right underneath the coil pack. Okay, and you actually have to take these off, take the three bolts loose for the coil pack, and it's it's right down underneath that coil pack. And instead of me doing a whole video on it, there's actually a really good video already on YouTube about it. I'll go ahead and link that video in my remarks, and you can go right to that. And it, it gives you a really good step-by-step, -step, and I won't have to recreate the video, and I'll give him some credit for it. So anyway, I'll do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop right now. I'm going to do that and change that out. Out, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together on this side and then I'll move over to the other side and then I will be back okay I'm back for just a second a uh, little off topic but uh, I was talking to my sons I have three sons and two of them have Subarus one has this 2006 and another one has a 2010 and they were telling me that every just occasionally they were having an issue where the engine would want to die on them at a stop sign or whatever and actually even had died so I started researching that and besides the PCV valve um, the only other thing I could think of that it could be is uh, they hadn't actually pulled their uh, uh, the covers and everything off of the throttle body and actually cleaned the throttle body. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, see if I can uh, get that uh, that uh, hesitation and issue they have with it wanting to die to go away. So there's a, there's a bolt here, bolt here, and got to take a, a couple of things loose here, and then there's a center. Um, clamp right here that has to be uh, released. So I'm going to go ahead and take those loose and pull that off and I'm going to look at that throttle body and see how dirty it is. So uh, we'll be right back. there's a couple things that have to happen uh, to get this off properly so I'm going to show you those right now first of all uh, this has got to be disconnected right here which is this one right here just which just slides out okay then there's a bottom connector right here and it is this one right here and it's got this thumb pull on it okay then you got the center one right here that's a flat tip screwdriver on mine and then over here, you got another pullout right here with a little thumb on it, and it goes right there, okay? Then you can go ahead and pull this off. This piece here does not need to come off, but there's a little connector that does slide out right there, and that's this little connector right here, okay? Once you do that, then you can pull that off, and I can see oil in mine already. Um, let me go ahead and pull this up here. I can see some oil in there already that I'm going to have to clean up. And let's see if I can get a shot. I don't know if my camera will do it or not. Let me pull this out and see if I can get a shot of the throttle body. It's going to be difficult. Mine's pretty big. Okay, so there's the throttle body right there. And I can't really push it in. Give me a second. I'll see if I can push that in with my hand. Give me a look in there. I can't. I'll have to get a. I'll have to get something to put in there. But I'll do that real quick. Okay. When you go in and you start messing with the throttle body, remember that throttle body's got to stay very smooth. So I'm using an insulated fill. I don't want to scratch anything inside, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and try to work that Phillips in there and open that up, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I took that uh, insulated Phillips, and I took a little bungee cord, and I just hooked it in there so I can hold that in. Let me see what you can see in there now. So that's what it looks like on the inside, and definitely the outside and inside were both very dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that cleaned up, and I will be back. All right, when you get ready to clean this uh, throttle body, a clean 
lint-free cloth, absolutely. You want nothing in there, okay? And then use something that's got an oil eater, cleaner, degreaser. Don't spray it inside the throttle body. Spray it on your cloth and then clean it with your cloth. And then I'm gonna use a little, uh, uh, a little brass brush on the inside of the top. And I'm sorry I can't show you as well any, any better, but I just can't get my camera in there and work at the same time. So, but I, I'm, I'm starting with a clean cloth and I'll let you know what it looks like after I'm done. But I'm, I got a feeling it's gonna be pretty dirty, so. Okay, here's the uh, brass brush that I used. I like to use brass because it's uh, really, really easy on metal. So that's the brush I'm gonna use on the inside on the top. And there's what my rag looked like after I was done. I started with a very fresh, clean one. Uh, so it, it had a lot of carbon in there, more on the inside than the outside flap. So anyway, I went ahead and did the best I could on that, cleaned it up, and I'll put the camera back in there to show you what it looks like now. See if I can work this in there. You can see it. Anyway, it's uh, probably ten times better than it was when I started. So uh, I think I'll have to get some more cleaner and uh, run some cleaner through it as well, some throttle body cleaner. So. All right, I've got everything cleaned and uh, hooked back up. Don't forget that this has to be connected back. This has to be connected back right here. You've got a hose right over here. Right here, this hose has to be connected back there. You got a bolt here. Got another bolt on this other side right here. And then your clamp has to be tied as well. Then there's another thumb clamp right there and that hose, it has to go back on. So don't forget any of those. Okay, but that's it, it's cleaned up. Inside and out, the throttle body's clean, so I'm ready to continue on. Okay, I'm back and I've got my left side all put back together now. Got my spark plug wires put back in. Uh, I had to take off the uh, coil pack right there to get underneath right that hose right there. It connects to your PCV valve. So I had to take this off uh, so I could get to it, but I did and went ahead and changed the PCV. Put it all back together again, rerouted my uh, uh, my number one and number three. So I've got that, I've got this side completely ready to go now, except for putting my air, my air box back on and I'm not gonna do that until after I'm done with the transmission because I've got to fill the transmission fluid right there. That's where your transmission dipstick is. So I've got everything buttoned up over here. Now I'm gonna head over to the other side. What I did is I went ahead and took out the uh, battery, cleared the battery box. I pulled out the number uh, two and the number four. Just get them out of the way. Now that gives you a pretty good uh, shot at your two, uh, two and four cylinders right there so you can get your plugs, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knock those two plugs out. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this stuff off here and get to those injectors. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, um, I'm back, and a couple of these bolts are pretty tricky. Um, now, the two, one, there's one on the top here. There's another one right here. Then there's one that's directly underneath the number four cylinder. You can see where my finger is right there. There's one right under, right above that, okay, that's gotta come out of there. The best way to do that is to take this hose off right here. See if I can get you a better picture of it. See where that hose was? Take that hose off right there and that'll give you a little room to work. But it's right above the number four cylinder. Then the toughest one is right here. If you look right down in there, you'll see that one. Now, to get that one out, it, it'll come loose with an, an open-in wrench, but it won't come out until you pull the whole cover out because there's just not enough room in there. When you put it back in, you're gonna have to put that back into that cover, then slide the cover in place and then tighten it up. Otherwise, if you try to put it in later, it's not gonna work, okay? So it's very tight in there. I'll show you all four bolts as soon as I get it pulled out. Okay, there's the four bolts. They're all the same. You've got um, two on the top, one there, one there. One, that's the tough one down there on that left side and then one straight away right above the number four cylinder. Okay, so that's the four bolts and that's where they go. 
And that's the way it sets inside the engine, just like that. All right, so now I'm gonna go over and take a look now and see where, looks like a pretty clean shot now for my injectors. So um, I, uh, there's only two bolts right underneath here, one on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those two bolts. I think they're 12s. I don't know if they're 12 or 13. I'll let you know in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those out real quick and that'll loosen that up and I can get to those injectors. Okay, now remember when you pull the injectors off, on the bottom, they've got a little push-in tab on both of them, right on the bottom. It's not on the top. Um, this looks like it's one right here on the top, but it's not. It's underneath the bottom, and you're gonna have to use a little pair of pliers like this to get them off, okay? So after you take those two loose, get them out of the way. Okay, and there's my rail. I've already got my two bolts out of the rail, and I've already got it, got it loose. Now remember, when you pull these injectors up a little bit, right there, and right, right back there, when you pull those injectors up, you're gonna get some gasoline, okay, just like the other side. So make sure you have you a, a throwaway towel or something to catch that uh, gasoline. And then also let, your, let it all, uh, you know, let it work out, uh, let it evaporate before you do any kind of starting up or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those two injectors and I'm gonna swap them out. Okay, so there's my two old uh, injectors and there's the two bolts that hold the injector uh, railing on. It had one uh, zip tie on it that you have to cut out before you can get to the, uh, to pull the leads off. So, and here's my two new ones and I just checked to make sure that they look just like that and they do. And I found out that Q-tips are really good to clean out the, um, the opening for the injector. So I'll walk over here and I'll show you my injector openings. You can see them right down in there. Right there. And then one on the other side over here. Okay, right there. So make sure those are nice and clean inside before you put your, uh, your new injectors in. And again, um, I just lube those um, O-rings just a little bit with just a little light, light, light coat of, of uh, grease. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that ready and get those new injectors in, and I'll be back. All right, I got my injectors in place. And uh, make sure that uh, down on the bottom, where your connectors go, make sure your injectors are facing straight down, okay? Make sure they're straight down. That way you can put your uh, leads back on. If you turn them left and right and then put your bolts in, you're gonna have trouble, okay? So I've got the uh, fuel rail on top of them. I've got it seated. Now all I need to do, I check my two bolts and they're lined up, my bolt holes are lined up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my bolts back in then I'm gonna put a zip tie back on after I put the leads back on. So I'll be back as soon as I'm done with that. Okay, I've got my leads snapped back into place. I also went ahead and added my zip tie back. Uh, I torqued everything down and I am ready to put the cover back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the cover back on and then we will actually be ready to fire this up. And uh, I'll be back shortly. Do not forget to put that front bolt in first, right down there by my finger. If you don't put that bolt in first, I'm hoping to see if I can get a better angle on that bolt. And it's very, it's very dark. Right there. If you don't get that front bolt in there first before you put all these other ones in, you're not going to get it in. Okay, that's a very difficult bolt to get put in. So get that front bolt in first, do it by hand, then line your other holes up, and you shouldn't have any problem. I'll go ahead and get these back on. All right, make sure you uh, route all of your spark plug wires back properly. Make sure two's in the front, four's in the back. And there, this hose right here, make sure you put this hose back in. Put that hose back on before you put on your number four um, wire because it's harder to put on after that. And make sure you uh, 
go ahead and put your snaps in place and I think I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick battery maintenance and then put the battery back in and I'm going to give her a quick start. All right, I've got the battery back in. I use just a simple uh, battery post cleaner, and it's got the the one on the bottom and the, and the little brush. I use the one on the bottom to go over the tops of the battery heads. Then I use this little inside brush, and I clean out the inside of my cables just like that. Make sure that everything's nice and clean. And then I, do, I take a little light lube after I put mine back on. I take a little bit of light lube and put it on the top of each one of them that keeps it from uh, corroding up. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up and put the uh, uh, bracket back on to hold the uh, battery down and we'll be ready to start it up. All right, I'm back and I finished up the battery service. I put everything back together again. I fired up the engine and it ran smooth as silk. So I'm real happy with that. I've got everything buttoned back up on top of the engine. Everything's cleaned up and wiped down. Everything is put back on except my air duct right here. Turn my light on there. I didn't put this back on because I'm going to do a transmission service. And the transmission service is that yellow stick right there is where I'm going to put the uh, uh, transmission fluid back in. So I'm going to leave this out. I've got a K&N filter to go back in this. So I use a K&N re, uh, reusable filter. But if you don't have a K&N, make sure you get your new filter and put it on. Uh, so you have that done. So basically on the top of the engine, we are complete. Uh, I ended up doing, uh, I did injectors. I did uh, spark plugs. I put new plug wires on. Uh, and if anybody has a question about the firing order, I'll just explain it to you right now while I'm here. Okay, this is, uh, this is the uh, right hand side as you're looking at the engine. Okay, um, this one right here, that's the number one cylinder. That's the number three cylinder. The one on the very opposite side on top is the number two, and the one on the bottom of that is number four. So it's one, three, two, four on that, uh, on that block. If you, want, if you ever need to replace the coil or whatever, it's a one, three, two, four, and then make sure they go to the corresponding. So when you're looking at the engine, just like this, okay, this is the number one cylinder, number two cylinder, number three cylinder, number four cylinder. Okay, I, some people get confused about that, so I just thought I'd clear that up while I'm at it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get underneath the car and show you a couple things about the oil change. The oil filter especially is really difficult on this uh, legacy, so I'm gonna show you that and then show you how to do it the best way. I'll be right back. Okay, as far as the uh, oil filter itself, I use a Fram TG uh, 6607. Any of the 6607 series numbers fits this 2.5i. I like this one, this tough guard, a little bit better than the others, but uh, whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you need to use, but that's the filter you need. And uh, I'm gonna climb down underneath here and show you this uh, setup for the oil change. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm underneath the car and uh, there's your oil pan right there and there's your uh, plug for this make sure that your uh, washer is in good shape and that your plug itself is in good shape i've actually got a new one this round that i'm going to replace it with and i've got a little le leak there it looks like i'm going to see if i can find it but uh, it doesn't look like it's an oil leak it actually looks like it's a, a power steering leak but anyway that's uh, that's your oil plug right there, okay? Now, the tricky one here is the oil filter, all right? Now, if you look right there, there's your Y pipe where uh, the exhaust is right there, and right in between that Y pipe, if I can get in there, I'll show you that. There's your filter right there, and there's no way to get up in there with any type of a, a standard um, you know, the kind of wrencher you're normally used to. So what I have done is I use an extension, and I'll pull this out and show the one, the one I use. Okay, so these are the two tools that I use right here. I use the cup style, okay, and I use an extension and a ratchet. And that will go right on there like that. And then that'll go right up into that Y pipe, and I'll show you. Let me get 
situated here. Okay. Oh, my light fell off. Give me just a second. Okay, this is a pretty good angle here. I had to take my light off. And then if you'll see my setup, you can just take this, slide it right in there like that, and uh, put your ratchet on the end, take it right off. Now this is going to get really messy really quick. So just crack it, have your uh, oil pan underneath it, let it drain out as much as you can, and then ease this straight down, okay? Just like that. Pull that straight down with the uh, filter in it, and that will minimize your damage because this is probably the messiest oil change engine that I've ever done because it's right in between that Y pipe. It's a royal pain in the butt, but unfortunately, that is the design of the 2.5i Subaru engine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil out, and then I'll go ahead and get the filter out and then uh, put the new one in, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, you're going to have to bear with me just a second. Okay, so I uh, repositioned everything so you can see it. Now, see, I take this, and I just slip it right up in there like that, and then you just hook your ratchet to it, and you go ahead and pull it out. Now, I'm going to warn you, this is, a, this is a really messy one, okay? The way this is set up, I mean, no matter what you do, you're going to get oil between those Y pipes, and you're going to have to wipe them off, and you're going to smell it all. It's just the way the design is of the 2.5i engine. There's just no way to get around it. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. So you put that in there like that. You put the ratchet on it. Crack it open. Put your pan underneath it. Let it drain out as much as possible, okay? And then leave, that, leave this cup on it, on the filter, and just ease it down with that on it, and then pour the filter into the pan. Okay, and then of course you'll have to clean up the best you can because you are going to get oil all around that thing. There's just no way to get around it. So I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil, take care of that, and then change this filter out. And uh, I think I'll go ahead and film that so you can see it. It's a mess, but um, I'll just go ahead and set up and so you can see how messy it is. And we'll be back shortly. Okay, this is the best I'm going to be able to do. Uh, to show this, but anyway, I've got my wrench on there. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, filter loose. It's going to be a mess, but that way you see how it's done. As soon as you get it hand loose, then go ahead and pull your wrench off and just use the shaft. Loosen it up until it starts leaking. And there it goes. I mean, it's just that messy. Okay, it's going to uh, drip over each side of the Y pipes, and I, I've never been able to do it without getting, without it being a mess. Okay, so go ahead and let that empty out like that as much as you can, and then I'll show you how to take that down. Just like that, and turn it over. I mean, it's a, it's a mess, but that's the way it is. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get that all cleaned up, put the new filter on, and then I'll be back. Okay, uh, when you get your filter ready, okay, what I always do is I take a little bit of the old oil on the end of my finger, and I just go right around that seal just like that, just to lubricate that seal. That is a good practice to do, okay, before you put that new one back on. And also, look up in where this filter goes and make sure that old seal has not stayed on the old filter, because I've actually had that happen to me before. And then you have, you're talking about a serious big mess, because the old seal is going to give way, and then you're going to have all your oil out on the floor. So always check that before you replace it with the, uh, the new filter, and you'll be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. All right, I got the uh, plug back in, and I got my oil filter on, and uh, I usually put about uh, four quarts in mine to start. Then I start it up, then I top it off, and it usually tops off about 4.5, 4.6. 
okay but don't overfill it you know put four in there check it okay right on the side of these uh, you know you've got your little side uh, gauge there so you can know how much you put in definitely don't want to overfill these four cylinders not a good thing so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the oil in get it topped off crank the engine set it all up and then I will be back and we will talk about the transmission service so we'll be back in a few sorry everyone for stopping the video but it was getting pretty lengthy uh, over 40 minutes and that's getting pretty long for a YouTube video so I thought I'd go ahead and stop it here right after the oil change and we will pick it up on the second part of this video and I will go through the transmission service and also the two differential service changes as well so uh, see you back on the second video thanks a lot for watching uh, if you liked what you saw please give us a thumbs up or better yet uh, subscribe to the channel we'd like to get to a thousand subscribers this year thanks a lot and we'll see you on the next video.